What's up guys, so um, I just did a bunch of videos uh, on this rack before and it just occurred to me that I really haven't told you guys uh, what operating systems and stuff are all running on these. So um, I'll go ahead and run down uh, through that real quick and I'll just show you guys basically the software into this, what the, he what the hell we're running on these things. Because I mean, you really can't look at a, a, any box and just say, oh, he's running, you know, Windows Server, or he's running, you know, um, Windows 8 or hell um, Ubuntu or whatever and you don't, you don't know what the hell is running on the on the server it could be running absolutely anything I mean there's some people that do run Windows 8 on the server I don't know but uh, anyways um actually who the hell runs Windows 8 I mean come on uh, <laughs> um, anyways what happens is uh, I've already explained how it's all connected but um this firewall which is the main firewall it, it you know separates the LAN from the WAN it has the caching it has everything okay and that's what's so cool about it is it has everything it has caching and it has uh, it has a squid proxy it can do a lot this is running pfSense everything I have here is open source freeware shareware whatever you want to call it um, I know those aren't the technical names because freeware and shareware do mean something, but it's all open source. It's all free, with the exception of the packet shaper and the load balancer. Those two come with licenses, and you do have to license the software and stuff on them. However, I bought these guys. I bought everything here on eBay, to be honest with you. But I bought these guys on eBay with um, licenses included with them. They don't really ever expire, so I never really had to pay for them. But um, you kind of do gamble when you buy these kinds of things on eBay because they can be password protected. If they haven't be re been reset or they don't tell you the password, you may be SOL. And that's actually what happened to this box. This was an access gateway from Citrix. It was an access gateway 2010. And it ha came with a hard drive with their software on it and it was password protected and it would just wasn't worth cracking or anything. So I just ended up throwing PFSense on it and it's probably the best choice I've made. So PFSense, I believe it's running version 2.03 or something like that. I could be totally wrong, but it sounds about right to me. 2.03, I'm going to go ahead and just throw my word on that. The Packeteer Packet Shaper, I'm not sure what version it is. I think it's like 8 point something or something like that. I really don't know between these two boxes because really, I mean, if you buy these boxes, the Netscaler, the Citrix Netscaler, um... Actually, I'm not sure the exact model number of this. I think it's like a 4,000 or 4,500 or something like that. But anyways, uh, both these boxes will come with software. This is a Packeteer Packet Shaper 3,500. You can find these on eBay. They'll come with software if uh, you buy it. If not, even um, a box like this, the Citrix Netscaler or whatever, this is an excellent box to run PFSense on. Um, you can run PFSense on just about anything. It has the requirements on their website, and it's probably the most powerful... A uh, little firewall software I've ever seen that's free and it's open source and it has packages you can install on it. It's great. So check out um, PFSense. Just go ahead and take a look at their website. It's great, and it is. Uh, it runs on I think FreeBSD is the operating system. It's kind of all embedded in there, and you can just. It's actually an operating system pretty much. PFSense is. I mean, essentially it's an operating system, but not really. It's like programs running within an operating system, but you install it and everything so everything else is running Ubuntu um, Linux Ubuntu server 12.04 or greater actually all these are running 12.04 the only one that's running a version higher is the 14.25 it's running 13.04 Ubuntu server 13.04 um, the two PowerEdge 1750s those are running um, x86 32-bit so these are 32-bit servers um, Apparently, the servers do have the ability to, the the processors have the ability to run 64 if you do something weird with them, but I haven't wasted my time or really tried to do it. I just ran 32-bit because it just loaded right on there. Um, it gives me trouble trying to load 64-bit, so they run great. Um, this server has 4 gigs of RAM, um, like I said in my first video, 36 gig, hard, 36 gig hard drives all the way through RAID 5. This one has 6 gigs of RAM. Um, 174 gig hard drives or whatever all the way through RAID 5. Um, this box here has 8 gigs of RAM. Um, it has 750 gigabyte SCSI drives in there. Or sorry, uh, SATA. These are running SCSI. This is SATA. And then 
the 1850 again Ubuntu 12.04 server 147 or 147 I don't know what it is it's 100 I think it's 147 not 100 whatever I said before but it's 147 gig hard drives um they're weird numbers I don't know why the SCSI drives are just weird numbers but and then there's the uh, 18 or the 2950 Dell Power 2950 box down there and um, it runs um, again Ubuntu server 12.04 and um, it has uh, 8 gigs of RAM and uh, 750 gigs all the way through RAID 5 and then this one also has 4 gigs of RAM this uh, 1850 for now it has 4 gigs I want to upgrade that but um so just a rundown of what's running on them LAMP, LAMP, so it's running Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Those guys would be load balancer here. They're pretty much mirrors of each other, exactly the same. These are the two front-end web servers. This guy right here is running Squid, and it's also running... What the hell else did I say this thing was running? Oh, MySQL. So it's running MySQL and Squid on this server. And these servers right here will communicate through this to store their MySQL data on... Um, and then this guy right here is just a big file server, and it really has nothing on it besides a uh, Samba file server. These actually all have Samba on them. They all have Samba. The reason I have Samba on all of them is because when I'm at home and I'm on the computer and I want to actually move files from, say, my computer to this, let's say I wrote some PHP files or whatever, and I want to throw them on the web server, it makes it so easy and convenient with Samba to just throw them on there. So I have Samba file server on all my servers. Whenever I install Linux Ubuntu on these servers, by default I install Samba with it. So of course I have the SSH client so that they can all secure shell, and then I do Samba. And that's what I install on all the servers. It's great. I recommend you do it. Um, just open it up. Don't lock anything. Screw it. Um, as long as it's on your local network, you shouldn't have to worry about people hacking into it or anything. And um, I write all my files, and I, it just makes it so easy to copy and share files between the two without having to do some long-ass command line just to copy a file. It's kind of ridiculous, but um, it just makes it easier. But if I am moving a file from one server to another, and it's a large file, I will use the command line because I can use secure copy and do it through the gigabit switches, and that's exactly why I have that switch in place right there. But that's pretty much it for what the heck's running on all these boxes. Um, very basic, they're pretty much all dedicated, you know, dedicated web, dedicated squid, and MySQL, and dedicated, um, file server, dedicated file server. By the way, this, uh, server up here, the 1425, I kind of left that one out, this is running Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, LAMP, and it has, um, own cloud running on it. So, for those of you guys who don't know what own cloud is, go ahead and take a look at that as well. It's very, very cool. Um, it allows you to do file, you host your own cloud server for file sharing and it has a lot of cool features in it and it's really really cool again open source um, it's great and they do have an app you can buy it's only 99 cents in the app store um, that's the only thing that I had to pay for with OwnCloud and it allows me to upload my photos or download files between my iPhone and the OwnCloud server and then I can get them on my computer and that's great the reason I love that is because when my iPhone gets full of photos I can just load them to the server delete them all from my iPhone and they're on the server so own cloud, check it out. Great piece of software, and it runs inside a web server. It runs inside a lamp or whatever, and it's just PHP crap and stuff like that. So, pretty basic. Um, so that's it for what's actually running on all these boxes, uh, um, as far as software and operating systems and stuff goes. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial, or not a tutorial, but this little rundown of this stuff. If you guys have any more questions or whatever you want to know anything about this. I'd love to go into greater detail, but uh, just let me know what you want to know. Shoot a comment um, and email me. Uh, go on to my website, which will hopefully be up soon, techgeekforums.com. And um, like always, guys, hope you enjoyed it and have a good one.